To start animating the ball in 3D space, we'll need to create a path that adheres to a plane. Press Shift A and select Mesh Cube. Press S to scale and make the cube quite large. Select the sky dome and then press H to hide it. Press 7 for a top view. We'll rotate the cube so that its front face is aligned with the camera view. Press G to grab and move the cube. Press 0 on the keyboard to go to a camera view. You'll see that this view is contained in the highlighted area. Press T to open the Sensei panels, then press the Grease Pencil tab. Choose Surface. From the File menu, open User Preferences and then Editing. Under Grease Pencil, set these two fields to 7, then check the Smooth Stroke checkbox. Click Save User Settings, then close this window. Pan the view so that we can draw a Grease Pencil stroke along this front face of the box. Hold down the V key and then begin drawing the path. Once we've completed the path, we can delete the cube by pressing X on the keyboard. Press the Convert button and choose Polygon Curve from the selections. Open the Grease Pencil drop-down and then hide the Grease Pencil line. Select the Polygon Path and then press Tab. Press C on your keyboard to move these vertices. Press this button to enable proportional editing. Click the curve and then begin dragging using the scroll wheel to control the amount of influence. Press Tab to exit edit mode and then press Shift A and create another cube. This will be our ball. Press G to grab and move it and then W several times. Press S to scale the ball. Then G to move it into place. Zoom the view on the ball. Click the brush icon which automatically creates a low resolution color layer. Click Add Specular to take away the shine. Click the Sensei tab, then hover over this icon and choose Draw. Create a light yellow color. Click the Paint Through icon. Resize the brush. Increase the strength. And then paint the yellow all the way through. Click the Cube icon to return to Object Mode. Press T to close the Sensei panels. Press this icon to open the Material Properties and increase the Emission value. This will soften the shadow on the ball. Click the Terrain and increase the emission value here as well, giving it a more cartoony look. With the cursor in the main view, press Alt-H to reveal the Sky Dome. Click the Material Properties icon again and under the Shadow drop-down, uncheck Cast. Press the Camera icon to produce a rendering, then press Go Back. Press 7 to get a top view. Press G to grab and move the dome into a more optimal position for panning and rotating. To see this in action, rotate the camera view as shown. We've produced excellent parallax and a really good sense of the 3D scene. Select the ball, then shift select the path. Press T to open the Sensei panels and click this follow button. Press T to close the panels. Select the ball, then press S to scale it down slightly. Select the path, then click the path icon on the bottom right. We have 100 frames of following the path, and the evaluation time determines the position of the ball along this path. Press Tab to enter edit mode, and then select these points to move them above the ground surface. Adjust the proportional editing influence with the scroll wheel. Drag the mouse in the Evaluation Time field to check our edit. Press Tab to return to Edit Mode and do some more adjusting. Press Tab again to return to Object Mode and drag the mouse again in the Evaluation Time field to double check. Scrolling the mouse wheel in the timeline zooms the timeline in or out. Hold down Shift and the middle mouse button to pan the timeline view. Press B to box select these frames, then press X to delete them. From the View menu, uncheck Show Seconds. Now the timeline will display frames. Pressing F while in the Timeline view or the Main view will set and advance a keyframe. Change the evaluation time of the ball. Hover over the field and then press I to set a keyframe in that position. 
Press F to advance to the next keyframe position. Change the evaluation time of the ball, press I, and then F again. Do this in sequence until we have the entire animation done. Make sure the mouse pointer is hovering over the Evaluation Time field before pressing I. Hover over the main view before you press F. This original keyframe will probably give us some trouble. We'll deal with this in a minute. Whenever you need to produce a hold in the animation, simply don't change the Evaluation Time and press I. Then press F to advance to the next keyframe position. This entire process simply is a blocking out of keyframes over a period of time. We'll have to do lots of adjustment to get the timing just right. Zoom the timeline in and then scroll it to bring all the frames into view. Play back the animation and you'll see the wild keyframe we mentioned earlier. Press B to box select this keyframe, then press X to delete it. Change the end frame value to reflect the length of the animation as we have it right now.